keep setting stop losses and you will keep losing in trading. Uh, say what, Leo? Did you just say stop losses will cause you to lose again and again? Damn right. That's exactly what I said, guys. If you're a real trader, at some point you will have to face the brutal fact of life is that if you set stop losses, you will lose again, again, and again. In this video, if for somebody that is an active trader, swing trader, if you're trying to improve your trading strategy and skills and evolve to a new level, stick around for the end because I'm actually going to offer some solutions on how you can avoid this mistake that most of the amateur traders make again, again, and again. So once a trader takes a couple of losses, they think, that they're really smart and they decide to risk manage this stuff well to them they start looking up videos well how do i risk manage it so the first thing they find out is the stop losses it says well you should keep your losses to a minimum and you should let your winners run okay well it sounds good until you actually put it in practice because it's a bunch of bullshit okay and so a trader let's say that would enter this trade on mark so let's say you were trading this friday and you heard the good news from Merck that they're developing the spill uh, to help fight COVID. And you're like, oh my God, I love this. Oh, this thing's got to be going to the moon. And so maybe you got in into the trade because it's already gapped up, but you were still bullish on it. And so let, let's bring up a uh, Merck chart here just to help you visualize a couple of examples. And so um, let's do a two-minute chart to help you visualize this better. So there it is. It is uh, 9.30. What does Merck stock do it opens at around 84 bucks okay so by that point you didn't have a chance to buy it pre-market unless you're actually buying shares of Merck so if you're trading options like we do here at 13 market moves we trade weekly options short-term options expiration okay this was your worst possible entry now the news was bullish for the company clearly but let's say you got in here because you were bullish and you set a stop loss okay you're highly bullish on that bill. You're like, oh my God, yeah, this thing is going to shoot up to the moon. You're getting in right here. And shortly after that, the stock drops three bucks. Well, it doesn't matter if you would have set a 10% stop loss, a 20% stop loss, a 30% stop loss. You would have been out of this trade. And so what does it do shortly after that? Well, it bounces. It bounces back pretty close to where you would have entered. So maybe at this point you were down just, just a little bit. And you could have minimized your loss, but you already had your stop loss set. So the trade is gone. What are you going to do? Are you going to enter the trade now? Well, a lot of traders are like, oh, my God, I had a bad entry. Well, let me try again. So they jump back in again to set the stop loss. Same story repeats itself. So now you've got two losing trades for the day. Well, I guarantee you what's going to happen after that. You're not going to touch this stock, this ticker, MRK, for a while. You'll be like, hell with it. I am not trading this bullshit ever again in my life. Okay, because you just took two losing trades back to back. And so, guys, it all boils down to managing your entries and exits. If you manage your entries and exits well, then you're not going to have to deal with the unfortunate situations of the stop losses. Now, I'm going to bring, I'm going to show you a couple more examples. But before I jump into this, let me just show you this shocker right here. Everybody uh, should be familiar with Kathy Wood by now. Which, by the way, she's going to be a subject of the next great short that we're going to discuss in the next video. But uh, Kathy Wood manages a $52 billion uh, fund. And so this is uh, her performance uh, in the last quarter. So as you can see, this ticker BLI, she's down 57.6%, guys. 57%. Do you think Kathy Wood does not know how to fucking set a stop loss? Come on, guys. Let's get real here. SKLZ, she's down minus 55%. TSP, she's down minus 50%. Guys, these are some heavy, heavy losses right here. Now, mind the fact that it's a $52 billion fund. And she runs her losses to the magnitude of almost 60% on some of these positions. All right, so there's no reason for you to feel bad about your losses and I guarantee you if you're a trader you got plenty of losses the question is how to improve okay one quick side note is the reason why 
professional fund managers, they don't lose freaking stop losses is because they focus on a much bigger move that is developing on a certain time frame. So before you even jump in any kind of trade, you need to identify your time frame for which you're targeting your trade. And unfortunately, most of the traders, I mean, that's, that's all they're focused on is this few minute time frame. A much better strategy would be to look at, okay, is this bullish move indeed going to continue for Merck? Or is this just the hype that the market got excited over and it's going to fade going into Monday and Tuesday? Well, based off the price action, okay, there is a great chance that we could possibly stage another pop to 84 after which the stock could drop. Well, automatically, Monday morning, we can just gap down a little bit, right? This is not the stock that we trade. Uh, we, you know, we, we've actually uh, traded exactly the opposite of that. We traded mRNA with a much uh, bigger move. And we traded uh, NVAX with a much bigger move. Now, for some of you, maybe you were not a part of our group, so maybe you didn't get a chance to get in. We're actually shorting NVAX at 228, and we're cashing out right here and right here on Friday. So maybe you didn't get a chance to be a part of our group yet. And you can certainly do so by uh, signing up at 13marketmoves.com. But maybe you saw all this bearish activity in NVX shares and you decided, oh my God, let me go ahead and short the hell out of this thing. It's crashing. I'm going to get in. And that's the thing. People don't want to short stocks when they see them go higher, like right here, right? That's a perfect entry. We've added to this position right here. But how did we know? I'm going to bring a little bit more light to the situation to help you understand things a little bit better. But for the example purpose, I understand there is a lot of guys that jumped into this trade as it was crashing. Now, this is the worst possible moment to enter because the options are going to be overpriced. You're going to pay a lot of money for the option and if the stock bounces, okay, and you have that stop loss set, guess what? You're going to be out. You're going to be out from a really good position on a stock that is likely to continue the drop going into next week. Now, the big part of the move is over, but the truth is, if you jumped in on the put side right here and you set a stop loss, the moment that bounce came, you would have lost out on your trade. You would have gotten kicked out of your stop loss right here or right here, and oftentimes, it will literally coincide with this upper part of the trading channel and you're going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. They, they, I, they got me cashed out of with a big loss right as the stock reverses. All right. So for many reasons, stop losses are working against you guys. And the main reason for that is the inability of an average trader to identify and manage their entries. OK, so it's not. You wouldn't have to worry about the stop losses if you focused more on your entries. Most of the money, despite of how many calculations and projections that you will make on a particular stock or market or whatnot, is going to it, your your gains are going to be as a result of execution. Your gains are going to be a result of your entries and exits. So if you can focus on improving that part, it's automatically going to help you alleviate a lot of pressure from the trade going against you and understand this the trade will certainly go against you guys the reason why Kathy Wood is down so hugely in a lot of these trades I mean let's just throw a couple of ticker symbols out there so BLI right let's take a look at that uh, she's down 50 almost 60 percent of that that means she was buying majority of her position right here at around 50 bucks uh, maybe she bought the dip right here, right, at 40 and that results now at the current price of $19. That results in a close to 60% loss in her position here. And let's throw maybe a couple of other tickers, right? And Okay, another example, Zoom video. So there it is. She keeps buying it right here at the double top, and then she buys it on the dip. What do we do? We short it right here at the black candle. And for some of you guys that have been following the channel for some time, and you still don't know what a black candle is, I have no clue how the hell you guys are trading out there. You've got to go to 13mmtv.com right now, pull the trigger, and invest in our charge divergences and pattern recognition course because there's no way you would have been missing out on this killer trade right here. So Kathy Wood is buying while we're shorting, and 
it clearly proves the point, guys. If you look at her performance over the last uh, three months, buying the dip is no longer working. And so this is just a little deviation from the main subject of the video, but uh, let's go back here and take a look at a couple of more examples. So bottom line, uh, your entries is what puts money in your pocket as a, as a trader, your entries and your exits. And in order to avoid being in a situation where you keep setting stop losses, because your stop losses will work against you every time when you make an error on your entry. So the solution is to improve your entries and exits. And if you do that, then you will not have to worry about the stop losses. Now, what I'm referring to here, guys, is the actual stop losses that you would go into your brokerage account that you would set on once you take the trade. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that it is vital and crucial to understand your mental stop losses. Your mental stop losses are key, and they have to be based on key levels. And so the typical mistake, let me describe this real quick, a typical mistake that the trader would make is this is uh, a two-minute today chart. But let's go ahead and this is what most of the traders do, uh, the ones especially that prefer to scalp, right? You go and you look at the one-day, one-minute chart, and you're like, oh, here things are crashing, here things are moving higher. And the typical mistake is, okay, when a trader keeps watching this and just keeps crashing, 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 so he thinks, okay, well, at least it's going to drop just a little bit more. And, and he gets, gets right here into the trade and thinks, okay, well, it's going to hit 150, okay? And the stock actually stops out right at 154. Well, the trader is only looking at this time frame, so he would have no clue, okay, where the major support level would be. And so it would really pay to go ahead and look at, the, at a much longer time frame chart. So when you look at, um, let's say, 180 day chart, okay, you would know that right at about 160 bucks, okay, this was your level that have been broken by this thing in the last six months. So this would, this would have given you a pretty good idea that you don't want to be shortened at that point the bottom. And sometimes the stocks will overshoot, they'll undershoot. So in this particular case, you see this uh, bullish reversal candle that is formed. The moment the stock hits 154, it bounces up immediately. So it actually pierces through that level briefly, but it doesn't stay there very, very long. So looking at this time frame chart would have really helped you avoid. You see how many times, I mean, 159 right here, 159, 159, guys. I mean, this stock had very, very minimum probability to hit 150. And so, God forbid you also put your strike price that coincides with actually your target price, meaning a lot of traders make a mistake. If they think something is going to drop to 150, they buy the 150 strike. Please watch our The Art of Picking a Strike Price video to help you understand that this is a critical error of why you can have a perfect trade, but it could still work against you and you could still have a loss. So... Basically, understanding, looking at the broader time frame chart, trying to understand from which level did the stock bounce multiple, multiple times in the past. Okay, you wouldn't be able to see it from looking at this chart. You would have no clue. So, uh, and at the composition of this chart, the way the stock was dropping on such a huge volume, you would have been very tempted to buy 150 strike at this point. And where would you be tempted to do it? You would have been tempted to do it right here, closer to the bottom. Closer to the bottom, understanding the overall view of a longer time frame chart would have helped you avoid jumping us to the trade at the worst possible entry. And so clearly when you're jumping in right here and you're setting in a stop loss, you would have that stop loss would have worked against you literally within 20 minutes. I mean you wouldn't have to wait long, you would have already lost out on this trade. And so the strategy is 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 not to set a stop loss as soon as you get into the trade. The strategy is to be able to look at the charts, analyze your levels, so you could go about your uh, entries and exits in a much more proficient and intelligent way. So understanding that this was the level would have helped you avoid jumping in this trade too late, shorten it at the bottom is one of the worst things you can do, and potentially you could have targeted a much better entry right here on the bounce which also coincided with this level of 180. So knowing your levels is critical. Knowing your levels 
is is key and if you want to learn more information about the levels guys the first step I would recommend is going to 13marketmoves.com setting up a 20 minute coaching session it's absolutely free uh, to talk to a senior coach here at 13 market moves and you can be well on your way uh, to improve not just on your entries and exits but be able to read the charts better being able to understand overall what's going on because uh, a lot of guys that are new that are getting into trading and they look at this short-term time frame one minute two minute five minute chart okay it will drive you absolutely insane because it looks like things are dropping then it looks like things are things are bouncing and so maybe you were jumping right here on the bounce thinking okay well it's enough I mean it looks like things are so bullish right now it's gonna keep going higher and as soon as you get in right here what happens you set a stop loss it gets executed right around here and you've got another loss see you cannot grow your account by consistently going in getting into trades and setting up a stop loss and then before you know it you're already out of the trade you don't even give yourself a chance to make any money because your strategy for managing your trade is to simply set a stop loss well when you have a bad entry and you set stop losses it's gonna work against you not in 90 percent of time it's gonna work against you in hundred percent of time because there's no such thing as getting a perfect entry each and every time there is a number of times where we nail perfect entries here at 13 market moves because we look at a variety of factors that can impact the trade we certainly look at levels we certainly look at 13 market move sequence we look at a bunch of stuff that most most of the traders they don't look at and so even though with everything that we do look at at analyze we're not nailing perfect entries each and every time and that that's where you got to look at the composition of the trade that's where you got to start looking okay understand that if I'm shorting this thing right here on the bounce okay it doesn't guarantee that this entry right here is going to be perfect so let's say we're shorting the bounce and it was like right here and we got into this trade at 173 and it still keeps bouncing and now we are at you know 179 so before you even get into this trade right here let's say you want to short the bounce you've got to make a decision ahead of time let's say you're working with a ten thousand dollar account well how much of your trade are you going to actually invest right here well since you cannot be 100 percent absolutely certain that this is you know ideally you want to short the bounce and i'm just using this for an example we wouldn't short it right here because clearly we would wait for this level right here so this level would coincide with a perfect almost perfect entry right because as perfect as this entry could be which is a match right on the second leg of the sell-off so the stock would generally come right about this level but even with this level look it does an overshoot it does like a couple of dollar overshoot what does it go to like 182 183 right here before it drops again like 12 bucks so if we're targeting an entry with 13 market moves would be short in the bounce right here now the trade could still go against us in this case it's three bucks but you've got to understand right what are you gonna do if the trade does bounce slightly more than what you expect in this case we call it an overshoot are you ready to add to the trade are you gonna chicken out well instead of adding to a good trade right here given the bearish setting overall if you take a look at the longer time frame chart it's bearish if you look at the catalyst for that day on Friday it was bearish if you look at the other vaccine stocks the whole group was bearish so you've got an entirely bearish setup here when you look at multiple things and so you don't want to be a bull in this circumstance basically instead of trying to catch the drop and go long and you know be the hero right here when everything is so damn bearish okay much better way um, is to focus on executing one strategy at a time and so if you're bullish on something and clearly you have to add and buy the dips if you're bearish on something you have to short the bounces and sometimes I talk to traders and like they wanna they wanna do both there is a time to actually do it both but it needs to be a perfect match in a lot of market conditions and criteria now on something like this and especially if you're new or intermediate you're better off focusing on just executing one strategy so let's review this real quick 
Okay, instead of setting a bunch of stop losses on a stock that's really jumpy, like this one, for example, okay, because uh, you would have been kicked out of a great trade multiple times, right? So let's say you missed that uh, alert that we send out right here, and let's say you're getting in right here and the stock bounces. If you had a stop loss, it would have cost you on a phenomenal trade. Um, if you couldn't persevere this bounce right here, okay, which we added on, you would have lost out on a huge phenomenal trade right here. So early I mentioned the time frame. The time frame is key because you have to understand, okay, so if you're short in NVAX right here at 228, okay, how long are you going to be in the trade? Well, some traders were happy to just short it here and collect 5x, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with a 500% return within the day but you missed out on a 5,000% return because you were so happy with your little 500% return here. Or worse, you got in at the bottom and you lost money because you had a stop loss that was set right here. Or maybe you persevered this and then we had a slightly bigger bounce and your stop loss worked against you and you missed out on the 50x trade right here. So the bottom line is when you're getting into the trade, number one, you have to understand your time frame. And unfortunately, again, I will say this, that most of the people that trade or they come into trading, they're so focused on making $100 a day, $500 a day, they get killed. They get killed because when a market gives you an opportunity to make 50x, why would you be happy with making 1x or 2x? You should be able after you acquire some skills to be able to understand that the bigger move here is in the making. Uh, going back to what may not be a perfect example of this, uh, right, Kathy Wood, why is she still 57% down in BLI and why is she not getting out? I mean, why is she down 31% on Roku and why is she not getting out? Uh, Zillow, why is she down 31% there and why is she not getting out? Why is she not cutting the trade right here, right now? But because she's focusing, despite of all these heavy losses right here, she's focusing on a bigger move. She's focusing on the bigger move because she understands, given her time horizon on these trades, which is long term, in the next, you know, two years to five years, there is a chance that these losses will actually turn into profits. And... It's tough to persevere these, right? Because how the hell do you hold a position that's down 57% or 40% or 50%? Uh, it is psychologically a very, very challenging and tough mental game. And that's where a lot of traders, uh, that's, where the, that's where they give in. That's where they give in to a perfect trade. It bounces on them and they're like, oh my God, I, I, I was up yesterday. Now I'm down. I'm cutting the trade. Well, going back to the example of that, we're using 10K. So if you added 2K here, all right, and the trade goes against you, you would add another 2K right here, okay? And on the loss bounce, you'd add another 2K right here. Now, understand this. Splitting up your entries into steer stepping is not as easy uh, to, to do as it sounds like in me describing this video because you're going to be fighting a lot of emotions. Uh, you're going to be fighting, you know, everything inside of you is going to scream to get out of this trade. I know it doesn't look like a huge move in this trade, but when you trade weekly options, the move from here to here, you're like, oh my God, I was making, you know, 5x here. Now I'm like losing 2x here. And so it's a very difficult, challenging decision to actually add to the position at this time. But the only way you can actually do it, if you focus on the bigger move. And in order to be able to focus on the bigger move, you've got to understand the underlying process. You've got to have a process for how you go for your trades and how you select them. So if you lack any kind of process, if your process, you wake up in the morning, you read the news, you see what's going on with the markets. Oh, Bitcoin is up today. Oh, oil is up. Oh, gold is, you know, up, down, whatever. Uh, well, this one fund manager, apparently he's buying this and this guy's doing this and like, fuck, this is not trading, okay? You got to be able to develop your own process, your own methodology, not just following the news, but you got to be able to beat the news. If you want to beat the market, you've got to be able to beat the news. And the only way to beat the news is you got to focus 
on certain technical criteria which we teach you in our courses guys you can learn this these skills can be learned and the emotional part of trading can be learned through working with one of our coaches here at 13 market moves so some of the challenges again with stop losses is you're not going to nail your entries and if your entry is a little bit off and you're setting a stop loss you are guaranteed to lose which sometimes I have traders tell me well yeah but I'm only going to lose 10 percent but yet you're also going to fuck yourself out of a 50x trade what's better I'd rather take my chances here and be down 2x on the trade and understand ahead of time that I'm not getting into this trade because I'm going to stay in it for one hour. I'm getting to this trade because my time horizon this trade is five days. I'm giving this trade to develop five days. And what I know for a fact, based off everything I've started in charts diverges, in pattern recognition, based off my 13 market move sequence, I know this move is coming in the next five days. Now, I don't know for a fact where the larger part of this move may be coming, okay? It might have happened right here. Like, we may not have had to wait another day or two, which basically cost a lot of traders who were not prepared emotionally. It cost them to jump out of a perfect trade. Or maybe their stop loss has worked against them, and now they are out of the trade. Okay? This, this move right here, this size move, could have happened here. And that would have made it for a perfectly easy trade. But you shouldn't be expecting going to the trade you shouldn't be expecting an easy trade each and every time because the truth is there are a number of trades that are going to be super easy, okay? A number of trades you're just going to be able to nail through your process like we do here at 13 Market Moves, and they're simple, easy trades. Now, you shouldn't be expecting every trade to be easy because the, the truth is 80 90% of the trades, they're not going to be easy. And it's your mental preparation and trust in your process is what's going to get you paid. So... The solution is to study and develop your methodology and your process that is not tied to the news, that is going to be able to help you make decisions in the same form and fashion each and every time. Let me describe another mistake that the trader makes uh, that potentially caused you a ton of profits um, in the past. Maybe let's look at... Uh, Let's look at a different ticker just to switch it up a little bit. Okay, so let's look at Amazon. Okay, so here's a great example. We're looking at the chart of Amazon. Okay, and so a trader wants to short the bounce. So he gets in and he buys Amazon puts right here on the bounce. Actually got a really good entry. So the next day Amazon drops. It only drops 30 points. So... There's no sense in a $3,400 stock getting out of a 30-point move. That ain't no big deal. That's not going to make you a ton of money. So the trader stays in the trade, and then the trade bounces on him. So what does the trader think? Oh, shit. I should have just gotten out right here. It was a 30-point move. Hey, at least I was making like, you know, at least I was making you know, a good bit of money. I mean, maybe the trader was making, depending on the size of the position. Let's say the trader was making... Uh, the five grand and said man uh, I sure thought I could make maybe at least 10 15 K in this trade I man and, and now it bounces on me I wish I would have jumped out right here just collected five grand and then reshorted it here not typical mentality right so first you see your account go in the positive you got puts the stock is dropping you're happy happy and then the trade reverses on you like a typical typical situation right so the goal here is look all of this happened within one day and interesting part is the stock comes right to this level of 3420 roughly. It's 3420 here, 3420 here. And despite of that highly, highly bullish day that Friday, it just it won't bounce out higher. So in this case, you have to make a decision, right? Yes, you could have locked in 5k here. Now you're giving all the gains away. Maybe now you're slightly negative because the whole day went by. And if you're trading weekly options now, they also depreciated in value. They got one less uh, day on, on the term of the contract. So now you actually have a small loss here, even though the stock price is, is, is at the same level. You got to make a decision right here, right now. Okay, you cut your losses because it's coming up to this level and it's destined to break above. And... If that's what you really believe based off the rest of your calculations, you got to cut the trade. So it, th there should be no like, 
oh, but I was making five grand and now I'm not making anything. I'm losing a thousand right here. It, this, this is not something you should be focusing on. Your P&L has nothing to do with your trade. Your P&L actually damages your emotional ability to execute your trades. So as we're going through this video that's really about stop losses, guys, I would strongly encourage you to close your P&L while you're trading because P&L kills good trades. All right. So this part of the, uh, this part. So this is the area where what we call a mental stop loss would have to come in play. Notice I'm not setting an actual stop loss here. OK, because look, in a stock like Amazon, it's a thirty four hundred dollar stock. I mean, it can move within seconds, ten dollars, and it will come back down ten dollars in case of a just a small overshoot. It can shoot up 20, 30 bucks within, you know, 10, 30 minutes and it'll come back down. So I have to be ready. So once I track this level of 3420, I know, hey, this is where I got into the trade. The day ago, now 24 hours has gone by. We're back to this level. What do I do? Well, considering how bullish the market is, considering everything else I was looking at, right, this is not where I want to jump out. I want to add to this trade right here because the stock, despite of how bullish the market is, it's hesitant to break. This thing should have broken out already, but it's hesitant. Despite of all the bullishness, it can bounce. Now, in order to actually make this decision in your favor, you would actually have to go and look at multiple uh, time frame chart on, on Amazon. And so that's where a lot of people, again, they don't go and they don't look at these things. So let's come to Amazon daily chart now. Let's take a look. So do you see what actually happened here on the Amazon chart? So we had a gap down, strong move lower, strong bounce. And when the bounce comes right here, guys, this is one of the easiest setups to short when we talk about shorting the bounce, right? So this gap down is what Amazon is fighting. And now it's at that level, which on that uh, shorter time frame chart coincides with a level about 3420. So 3420 is this level right here on the daily chart. Now, overall, if you pay attention to some of the prior videos, uh, the video specifically I posted on September 15th, we said, look, it's a, it's a head and shoulder formation on Amazon, right? So Here's your shoulder one, here's your head, here's your other shoulder. This is a very, very bearish, bearish pattern on Amazon. It's got a ton of room to go lower. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Amazon, guys, at 3000 which is about another you know, $300 drop here in the next uh, two, two weeks to 30 days. Wouldn't be shocking to see Amazon at 3000 maybe even 2900 So this is a very, very deadly pattern. So this should give you the confidence, okay, the foundation of the trade is you got a very bearish pattern developing on a daily chart. Then you take a closer look to what's happening now. You recently had a gap down followed by a bounce. This is the bounce that is highly desirable for a short seller because at this point the stock is fighting this, this very, very important level which was created on stronger volume on a gap down. Chances are if the volume to the upside is smaller as in the case right here, see when it was dropping, the volume was much greater than the current buy volume. So that's your volume divergence that would teach you in the charts divergence course. And this is your entry right here. And so it makes it very easy if you switch back to this chart. There's your 3420 level. Now see, you can't see the gap down on this time frame. So you wouldn't have this prior information. Uh, but now you know that this level right here is fighting this major gap down, which was created on a larger time frame chart on a much stronger volume. So that gives you full confidence to add to the position. And look what happens. Now this trader <laughs> is really going to lose his mind because now he adds to the position, the trade drops, and he's like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, this is beautiful. Now I'm making 15 grand on this trade. And he doesn't jump out and the trade bounces again. The trader is devastated. He tells his wife, honey, maybe I'm not cut out for this shit. Okay, I just, I can't, I mean, I was losing, I was making five grand here, I didn't get out. I was making 15 grand here, I didn't get out. Now I'm back to square one. I'm like, at basically break even on this trade. So the trader is losing his mind. 
And, and guys, you know, he shouldn't be losing his mind because instead of stop losses and all this stuff that most of the traders focus on, he should be focusing on managing this trade. So, as you know, we never recommend just buying one contract. You want to get a multiple of two or something that's easily divisible by two. So two, four, six, ten, twenty, a hundred. 20, 100. So basically when something drops, okay, when you own one contract, you literally would have to sell your entire position if you only hold one. Now if you hold two, right, now you're up 15K, you're holding two contracts, it would make sense to sell one. It would make sense to sell one. Never sell your entire position when you're focusing on the bigger move, right? That's another mistake the traders make. They'll sell, they'll say, oh, okay, now I'm up 15K. Let me get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, yeah, hallelujah, it's, I'm, I'm up 15K. Okay, fine. But what you just missed out on is an opportunity to make 100K because you couldn't stay with your trade. So it is a good idea to start collecting profits and it is simply impossible to do if you only hold in one contract. So start trading in multiple uh, sets of contracts. So two, four, six, and so on. So that way, if you're holding six contracts and it drops, hey, let me take some, let me take some money off the table. Let me sell one third of the positions. So if you're holding six contracts, you can liquidate two contracts, and you go, you will lock some gains right here. So when the stock bounces, you're like, okay, I made some money. I still. I, I'm still in control of this decision to add to the trade. Now notice, what's really going on here, guys, is a tornado pattern, which we describe thoroughly in our crypto course, We're strictly devoted to entries and exits. So this is a tornado pattern. So something drops, then it bounces, bounces once, bounces twice, bounces the third time. And if you really uh, look at the composition of this structure right here, it basically it sets a high, then the second one matches the high or just slightly below that high. And this third time around, or sometimes it's going to go four times in a row, it's going to be a lower high in relation to this last high right here. So when you have this setup, guys, this is a million dollar setup I'm showing you. You can learn more about it in our crypto course. But bounce once, bounce to slightly lower high in relation to the prior high and oftentimes you'll get a full out like this okay so let me refresh the entire trade so a trader's got 10k to work with he initiates the position right here with 2k understanding that hey this is the level i want to short how do i know i want to short this level where well, i come at a longer time frame chart i realize that there's a bearish pattern here i realize that this is the level or the balance that's not likely to continue and using this information, I go into a shorter time frame short, and this is how I'm able to nail this trade. So we got to bounce once. I sell a little bit of a position right here. Uh, so I've added two more thousand. Now I'm maybe selling a thousand of the position initially that I've invested here. Uh, gives me collect some profits, not all of it. I never get rid of the entire position, and now I'm adding on the bounce here one last time. Uh, and look at the time frame of this trade, guys. I'm literally about five days. Five, and I mean, this is the structure of about a five, six day trade right here that gets you paid huge. And you're catching a much bigger move. You're catching almost a 200 point move here instead of just focusing on like a 20 or $30 move that would have gotten paid you pennies. Now you're targeting real money. And guys, with stocks like Amazon, it doesn't take a lot of contracts. Uh, two to four contracts on Amazon sometimes on a $200 move, guys, it can get you paid hugely. I mean, this is how I've shown you multiple times how you can take a, a full 5, 10K account to a 50, 60K account just by trading a few contracts on Amazon. If you guys haven't watched those videos, guys, we've got a ton of videos on this channel if you're new that you can go back and revisit some of the live trades that we've shown you. So, um, guys, very simple strategy, but... If you keep setting stop losses in high volatile stocks like this, you will miss out your focus on a much bigger move because you're just focused on what the stock is going to do in the next five minutes. You're just focused on what the stock is going to do in the next hour, in the next two hours. You're just focused on what the stock is going to do today. And by focusing only on what is going to happen short term, this is what's going to happen, I guarantee you you are going to be at times able to lock in some small gains. But you will miss out on the big money. 
So keep setting stop losses. You will keep losing small, but you will never get to the big money. And the problem is, if you keep setting stop losses, again and again, it's just going to eat and eat and eat and eat at your account. And at some point, you will lose your whole account. Uh, so a much better strategy is to focus on your entries, setting mental stop losses that derive as a result of you analyzing the charts and levels, and therefore you wouldn't have to worry so much about what's happening every five minutes or 30 minutes or every one hour of the time that you're in the trade. And that's actually going to give you the peace of mind to sleep better, make more money, and so on. So, uh, guys, uh, there is a lot of stuff that I'd like to share with you, but there's only so much I can explain in one video, or at least just try to. And if you are interested in improving as a trader, I put a ton of, ton of useful information like this in much greater detail in our courses. And I know if you are a trader and you've made the decision to be successful, now the key here, if you've made a decision to be successful as a trader, is you got to have a strong level of commitment. You've got to take hours to figure out, okay, some of the nuances on your own. And the only time you can do that is you've got to spend time behind the screen. You've got to spend time behind the chart. So for those of you that that are brand new guys that are trying to come in and think trading is easy and you can knock it out because you think, you know, you're all, th this is the craziest shit that bothers the hell out of me. Oh, I'm so passionate about the markets, Leonardo. Well, I can guess the size of your fucking account within a hundred bucks, okay? Your passion about the markets is not going to make you the money. It's the hours of hard work and labor and reading charts when other people are watching the news. That's the stuff that's going to get you paid. But before you can even begin looking at charts, you've got to understand what the hell you're supposed to look at. So hopefully this video shed a little bit of light. But if you do want to learn what the hell is that you need to look at when you're looking at charts in order to improve your entries and worry less about the stop losses, I invite you to visit 13mmtd.com, invest in yourself and your education. If you're not sure which course to start with, please don't waste another minute. Schedule a 20-minute coaching call with a senior trader here at 13 Market Moves. I wish everyone happy trading next week. Let's roll. Don't miss out on the next video where I'm going to talk about why buying the dip is going to be the worst thing you could be doing over the next couple of months. I'll catch you in the next video. Let's roll. Happy weekend. And that's come back. So I think it's, it's I know that it's, we're all ETF to case by case, but, but David is forecast to be $400 trillion